how to tune a kalimba and an absolute beginner's guide as to how to play a kalimba. This is a one-off video and it's the follow-up to a video I recently did which is the review of the Lucato 17 key kalimba. You'll find a link to that video below in the description. In that video I pointed out that the instructions on how to tune the kalimba are really scant. So, I thought I'd do a video with far more detail of how to tune it, and that way you can get up and running and start to play your new instrument. And whilst I was at it, I thought I'd do a very basic tutorial just to get you started and up to the point where you can play your first tune. Then you'll have enough basic information to get you going on the kalimba so you can learn to play it properly. Right then, let's get started with how to tune up your kalimba. In order to tune it, you'll need the little hammer that came with it. Otherwise, any other little hammer will do. Even one of those ones you get with toffee to break it up would do. Or anything similar, as long as it's not got too much mass, because you don't want to end up breaking the kalimba. And you'll also need some form of tuner. And you can get these in hardware form that clip onto the end of things like guitars and banjos and stuff. Or... More commonly, I would have thought you can just use your mobile phone or tablet. So you can see it clearly, I'll be using a tablet and it's an Android device, so I won't be using the software recommended in the booklet. However, because I'd never heard of it, I did do a search for the one recommended in the booklet, which is Instuner. And this is still available for the iPhone and iPad. The tuner I'll be using is Universal Tuner and that's available on the Google Play Store. And the reason I'm using that one is one, because it was free, and two, it had some really good reviews. Right, before we start up the tuner, let's have a look at the kalimba. And you'll notice that the deeper, lower notes are longer, and the higher pitch notes are shorter. And this gives us a clue as to how to adjust the tuning. To tune the kalimba then, we use the little hammer to either lengthen the keys or shorten the keys. When we lengthen a key, we're flattening, making the pitch lower. And when we shorten a key, we're sharpening it, making the pitch higher. And doing this in conjunction with the tuner, theoretically, we can get all the keys bang on in tune. But it's really important to note that we're only tapping the keys very lightly and lengthening or shortening the key by the tiniest amount. And what we do is we move it a tiny bit and then we check it with the tuner and then move it the tiniest bit again and keep doing this until we've got it in tune. Whatever you do, don't try lengthening or shortening the key by too much in one go because you could end up ruining the kalimba. I'll be tuning the kalimba working from the centre outwards. So I'll start on the C and then work outwards to the right hand side and then go back to the D and work leftwards to the left hand side. But there's no reason you have to do it this way. I just do it this way because I find it easier to keep track of where I am on the kalimba. Uh, you can do it in any order you prefer. OK, that's the introduction over and done with. Let's tune the kalimba now. We'll start by checking the C. And you can see it's just a little bit sharp. First thing I need to do is locate the correct key and then just tap it slightly on the back. I'll just turn it round so I can get at it more easily. It's a good idea to keep relocating the key, lining it up, because it's so easy to tap the wrong key. If I don't do it during this video, I'll be very surprised. There you go, you can see that's about right now. It's a little bit sharp again, so I'll tap the key at the back in order to flatten it slightly. Do 
Just as long as we get it somewhere between the two lines, that'll be fine. That's about right. And that one is a bit sharp again. They all seem to be a little bit sharp. If you're not familiar with this kind of tuning, anything above the guidelines or upwards is sharp and everything below the guideline or downwards is flat and it doesn't have to be exactly on because most of these tuners go beyond human hearing. This hammer's pretty awkward and there's no way you could hold it at the end of the handle. You have to hold it at least halfway down the handle and possibly even closer to the head. So we're up to the B now and you can see again that's sharp. Seems to be a pattern on this kalimba that all the keys are slightly sharp. I'm going to have to move this around a bit because the tuner is just not picking up on the kalimba. Uh, unfortunately I've had this problem in the past and it's just a cheap tablet and because it's a cheap tablet it's got a cheap microphone so it doesn't pick up on stuff very well especially once you get into the higher range but I can use this as an excuse to demonstrate comparative tuning and you can see it's coming into tune slowly I'll speed up the video now because we're just repeating the process we've already done over and over again. However, I'll leave the notes that are out of range of the microphone and then we'll tune those using comparative tuning later. And that's where we just compare the note of the kalimba with the note we know is in tune. It's important to point out that you probably haven't even seen the keys move during this process because the movements are so slight they're almost indiscernible by the human eye. So if you're hitting your kalimba so hard you can see the keys moving this is wrong you shouldn't be doing this just hit the keys really lightly. It's also worth pointing out if you're hitting it too hard and you miss the key as I've done several times during this video you could end up damaging the kalimba. Right, at this point I'm going to slow the video back down again because we've actually got a flat. So far all of the keys have been sharp. Now because this key is flat we have to tap it from the other side i.e. where you actually play the kalimba. However, in order to prevent the key from being damaged or creating any sharp edges I need to protect it somehow. This can be done with anything that will prevent direct metal on metal contact. So a piece of wood or I used to use a patch for repairing an in-tube because the rubber was really nice. Uh, but I'm using a piece of kitchen roll here, which isn't the ideal thing because it obscures your view of the hammer. But it is preventing the keys from getting damaged and that's the important thing. This is interesting because it does happen and I'm surprised I haven't done it before now. I've actually overshot slightly. So I've taken it from being flat to being slightly sharp. So now I have to go back round the other side of the key and tap it back the other way. You'll also notice by tapping the key I slightly took it out of line 
but you can literally just move it with your fingers and bring all the keys and line them up again if this happens it's not a big issue For the last couple of keys, I'm going to use comparative tuning to get them correct. And how I do this is, I play a reference note that I know is in tune, and then I'll play the kalimba, and I'll compare the two tones until I've got them at exactly the same pitch, and then the kalimba will be in tune. You can actually tune the entire kalimba using this method, and it would really be the best way to do it, because you'd be developing your ear so you can hear more clearly when the kalimba's out of tune. You'll notice that on this kalimba some of the higher notes are slightly muted, and this can be corrected, but it's not the subject for an absolute beginner's lesson, so I'll have to do another video again in the future on how to correct this. Oh, here comes the director stepping in because she thinks the video is getting too long. Thankfully, this app has got comparative tones on, so you can play them and use them to tune the last few keys. And hopefully you can hear the difference between the app tone and the kalimba, and when the kalimba is slightly out of tune. If not, this is an ability that it's well worth your learning. And unfortunately, the only way of doing that is by practice. Just in case you find it useful, at the end of this video, I'll put a recording of a complete set of reference notes for a 17 key kalimba. I'll use a kalimba sound, so hopefully you can pick up on any pitch differences more easily. Right, let's move on to basic playing technique. And the first thing is how to hold the kalimba. This is going to be the quickest, easiest lesson in the world because there's no hard and fast way to hold the kalimba. Most commonly, it's held with your third finger around the back and your first fingers down the side and your thumbs over the front to play the keys. However, sometimes people play it with all their fingers behind the kalimba and just the thumbs around the front. And I've actually seen some really accomplished musicians playing it flat on a desk so that they can play it with their fingers as well as their thumb. This way they can play more complete chords. This way is also good for really young children because obviously if your hand is too small to reach around the back then there's no point you trying to hold it and play it with a thumb. So in this particular instance leave it on the desk and you can play it with your thumbs or your fingers whichever you prefer general rule is it's probably not a good idea to set in stone how you're going to play the kalimba until you've at least got the first one or two tunes under your belt and then you can practice these and get them as smooth as you can developing your hold as you go bearing this in mind let's try and get our very first tune how to play mary had a little lamb this is the first tune that's in the little booklet that came with the kalimba however I think it was a really good choice and it's an excellent place to start. So if we look at the tune, the first thing we need to note is it's broken down into bars. And if you look at the line coming straight down, this happens every four beats. We've now got a number on every beat or a hyphen or a dash, which means you don't do anything. And this just helps us get the rhythm of the tune. So. Let's try playing the first two bars, and if we look at them, we'll notice we've got a 3, 2, 1, 2, then a bar line, and 3, 3, 3. Now, if you look down at your kalimba, you'll notice on the keys, they're each numbered, so you can actually see the 1, 2, 3 there. So, what we need to do is play 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, three three and you'll notice I went straight through the bar line and it doesn't change the way you play anything 
and it doesn't affect the rhythm. In this particular case, you want to try and keep the rhythm as uniform as possible. And to help us do this, and so you can try and play along with me, I'll be using a metronome. And that's just a continuous beat that we can play on top of. Here's the first two bars. I'll play it twice with four beats between them, and there'll be two bars or eight beats before I start. Here's that again, see if you can play along with it. Now, let's look at the third and fourth bar. The third bar is just twos, so that's fairly simple. You just play the two three times. However, after the twos, we've got a dash, which means we don't do anything for a beat. Then we go on to the fourth bar, where we've got a three, five, five, and another dash, where we don't do anything. So here's what that sounds like. As we did before, here that is again, and if you can, try playing along with it. If you look at the tune carefully, you'll notice bars 5 and 6 are identical to bars 1 and 2. However, we'll play it anyway, because the more times you play it, the better you'll be at it. So, try playing along with it, and we'll just do the same as bars 1 and 2. And we're already at the end of the tune. And the last two bars are 2, 2, 3, 2 and 1. And we've got three dashes in a row there, which means we don't do anything for the last three beats. But the note will hold anyway. So let's hear that done. The same way as we've done previously, twice and after eight beats. Right, let's hear that again and try and play along with it if you can. Now what we can do is bring all those parts together and try to play the entire piece all in one go. However, you might need to pause the video at this point and go off and practice it for a bit and then you can come back and see if you can play along with it. Otherwise, you can just listen to it just so you know how it goes. At the end of this video, 
I'll put a few minutes of the metronome so if you want you can skip to that and practice with the metronome but don't worry if you're not ready for that just go away and practice without the metronome and then when you're ready you could try it with the metronome so here's the entire tune Mary had a little lamb And here it is again, in case you want to try playing along with it. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it and if you did please like and subscribe to the channel as I'll be putting a lot more musical content up in the future. And if you'd like to see some more very simple kalimba tunes taught in this style please leave a comment below because otherwise I'll have no idea if you want them or not. Thank you. Here's the tuning reference notes. Each note is repeated four times slowly however you'll still need to pause the video so you can do a proper comparison between that and your kalimba.
metronome beats. <laughs> 